And for politicians in Pakistan, the relationship with India, it's probably the most complex issue. So it's worth dwelling on who stands where when it comes to the India policy. Nawaz Sharif was probably India's best bet as a leader who repeatedly challenged the army and one who wanted to mend fences with India. Nawaz would have been the ideal prime minister for New Delhi, but that may not be. Sharif and his daughter Maryam are in jail for corruption. The chances are bleak for their party, the PMLN. And if by some miracle it does come to power, Shehbaz Sharif will be their prime ministerial face. He is known to toe his brother's line on normalizing relations with India. On June 12th, right after the Donald Trump-Kim Jong-un meeting in Singapore, Shehbaz Sharif has suggested that India and Pakistan must resume talks. Of course, there is a world of difference between what is said and what is actually done. In the unlikely event of a win, the PMLN will not challenge the army. In fact, Shehbaz Sharif is known to be more accommodative of the army as compared to his brother Nawaz Sharif. So there will be status quo if the incumbent returns. Next comes Imran Khan. His campaign was rather vitriolic from calling his uh, political rivals' names to using unparliamentary language. The PTI chief used every tactic to grab attention. Even when it came to India, he minced no words, accusing the Narendra Modi government of ruining ties between the two countries. Imran Khan said that the current dispensation often makes Pakistan a scapegoat when it comes to the Kashmir issue. Kashmir is, there's a independence, freedom movement going on in Kashmir. And India blames Pakistan for that. And so therefore, it, that uh, Kashmiri freedom movement is an impediment uh, between peace between the two countries. Because, uh, you know, uh, the Modi government, Narendra Modi government blames, makes Pakistan a scapegoat for what's happening in Kashmir. So you're saying on the Indian part, there's no will to to settle this issue? Uh, I think uh, the relationship probably have been the worst since uh, the Narendra Modi government came in, which is a very hardline government. And, and actually give full marks to Pakistan for trying to get a uh, proper better relation. But you see, as long as Kashmir is, uh, Kashmir is such an issue now because of this movement gaining momentum, and then the atrocities of the Indian troops, violation of human rights in Kashmir, then, uh, you know, Pakistan is blamed. And Pakistan, on the other hand, has to support the, uh, the Kashmiri movement, freedom movement. So that's the problem right now. But ideally, we should have peace with India. And, you know, the whole subcontinent is he held hostage to the, uh, to the Kashmir issue. Next comes a third key player in Pakistan, uh, People's Party leader Bilawal Bhutto Sardari. In September 2014, he dominated headlines for his address made during a political rally where he promised to free Kashmir and unite it with Pakistan. He declared back then that he will be bringing back every inch of Kashmir. That was the Bhutto sign in 2014. Four years later, though, Bilawal Bhutto Zadari has toned down a more mature politician. Bilawal now pitches for talks between the two countries. The most disastrous consequence for India will be if the terrorists rule the Pakistan establishment. Mumbai attack mastermind Hafiz Saeed may not be contesting elections himself, but he has fielded over 200 candidates. He has also been actively part campaigning for his son. On July 3rd, he was heard hitting out at Pakistani politicians for being puppets of India and the United States. He blamed India for trying to divide Pakistan. This party's win will spell the most unsavory scenario for India.